Hey everyone, in this video we're talking about the step-by-step -step process you can do to create a rich, fulfilling, and productive life and the exact plan you can do to create your dream lifestyle. Step-by-step, -step, everything from career, finances, relationship, your dream lifestyle, whatever it is, it can come to fruition. You just have to have a plan. I'm going to teach you everything I know about lifestyle design, exactly how I've created my dream lifestyle for myself and how you can do that too. Now a little bit about me, just for some background, my name is Carmen. Um, right now I hold a six-figure job in marketing that I absolutely love. I run a six-figure online business on the side about my passions. I'm healthy and I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm happily married and I have a booming social life and business network. And I say all these things not to brag or anything, but just to inspire you and show you that with some hard work and planning, you can create your dream lifestyle and make it come to life. And the first step in all this with lifestyle design is aligning with your values and just figuring out what they are. So during this video, feel free to pause it and write down and take some notes. I highly recommend that. Um, you can also do it on your phone or your computer. But the first step is aligning with your values. So I want you to think about what do you value in life and what do you stand for? This can be things like family, friends, happiness, health, freedom, independence, financial independence. And understanding your values creates the foundation of your lifestyle. And then we can create goals based on that. So again, pause the video if you need to to take some notes. I highly recommend that. But you really need to understand what you value in life and what you stand for, and then we can start taking the next steps. So once you do that, now we're on to step two, creating goals for each area of your life. And what I want you to do is either on paper or in a spreadsheet, I like using Google Sheets and uh, Google Drive to keep things simple, um, is to map out these different categories and pillars of your life and then create goals for each one. You might have a pillar for career, health, finances, relationships, maybe hobbies, education. Map out all the major categories in your life and then I want you to create two to three major goals in each area. And this will give you something to aspire to, it helps you grow. But the main thing here is to actually add steps beside each goal, so then we have an action plan to follow. A really big mistake people make is they set goals, but they don't really know how to accomplish them and the next best steps. For example, maybe with career, some of your goals are going to be to get a job that pays $75,000 a year to get a job that's fully remote, that you can do from home. Maybe you wanna get certain certificates and credentials to help with your career. Um, health, maybe it's you know, getting signing up at the gym. For health, maybe it's getting a personal trainer, signing up at the gym, losing or gaining a certain amount of weight. Finances could be saving a certain amount of money, saving for a down payment for a property, investing a certain percentage of your income. Relationships could be getting into a long-term relationship, making new friends, um, or maybe making business connections to help you with business in your career. And I want you to think big though, set big goals, set lofty goals, be ambitious. We want to get out of our comfort zone, okay? So it's self-improvement. One of the biggest things when it comes to your goals is setting things that get you uncomfortable and get you kind of into new areas and things you haven't done because that's how you grow as a person, right? Because when you do those things that maybe make you a little nervous, a little bit anxious, um, and I do this all the time, what happens is you internalize that and becomes a whole new kind of persona and becomes your new self. So those things that made you nervous and uncomfortable before, now it just become natural and they're nothing you have to worry about. It just becomes a part of who you are. So map out all these goals and then add steps for each one. For example, maybe with the career, if you're looking to get a higher paying job, you might make the steps of applying to jobs every single day, improving your resume, maybe improving your cover letter, looking up job searching strategies. Maybe you're going to reach out to recruiters every day on LinkedIn, right? Make those steps that you can take so you can actually make your dream goals come to life. For health, again, maybe it's packing your gym bag every day, signing up for that gym membership, working out two to three times per week. In finances, it could be saving a certain amount of money every week or month, investing a certain amount of money every month. Again, you know, make those steps so you can actually make your dream goals come to life. And then after that, we need to create a routine and a schedule. And this is a really big mistake I've seen a lot of students make and even some close friends, is they don't really have any kind of structure or routine to their day. They kind of wake up at a different time every day, they go to bed at a different time every night, and they don't really know what they're doing and when. And one of the best things you can do to be productive and happy is have a clear routine that you can follow. And especially if you're trying to get big goals done, you're gonna need a routine that you can stick to. And some things I want you to think about is creating a morning routine, an evening routine, and then mapping out each, uh, each day what you need to be doing to actually get all these things done. So for example, the morning routine, I'd recommend waking up at a certain time every day. I'm an early riser. I like waking up 4.30, 5 a.m. every day. You don't have to do that. Just wake up at a time every single day consistently. That helps you with your own lifestyle. So maybe you wake up at seven, eight, nine o'clock, whatever it is, just make sure you actually have that noted down and then you set your alarm. And a little hack you can do too, if you kind of struggle to wake up at a certain time, is set your alarm and then leave your phone out of the room. So you literally have to get up and go turn off the phone. 
um, get active. Maybe go for a walk, go for a run, hit the gym. You know, kind of getting your blood moving is a great thing. It also gives you a, an easy win early on in the day. You feel good and it kind of creates that momentum for the rest of the day. And that's why a morning routine is so powerful. It's because you create a really positive, productive note early on in the day and that tends to carry through for the rest of the day. I'm planning out the day and checking your calendar. This is a big thing too. One of the first things I do is I check my calendar. I kind of just get a real quick overview of everything that I'm doing that day. This can literally take 30 to 60 seconds. It doesn't have to be very long. Um, if you want to plan out your day, it might take a little bit longer, but just map out exactly all the projects you're doing, the errands you have to run, maybe studying, work, everything like that. Use Google Calendar, completely free. Plug in different time blocks for all the things you're doing, and then it takes the thinking out of your productivity. Journaling as well. I love doing this every single day, especially in the morning. Journal your thoughts and your feelings. You can do it on paper, you can do it on the computer or your phone, and just think about your goals, whatever you're thinking about and feeling. It helps you kind of develop self-awareness and think about all the different things you're experiencing, and you can also make a plan of action for different things that you're working on. I think meditation and mindfulness is a really big part too of a good morning routine. I like to either do visualization, where I visualize my goals and things I'd like to accomplish. Um, I do affirmations where you think and say positive things like, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm successful, things like that. Or you can just do kind of basic breathing meditation, but in any kind of combination, these are really good kind of productive, healthy habits to start the day. And again, that momentum will carry on for the rest. And then during the kind of morning, afternoon, evenings, the bulk of the day, you need to kind of map out your goals and responsibilities. So that's like work, school and studying and assignments, business things you need to do, errands and chores and kind of general life. I mentioned time blocking. So again, you can pick up Google Calendar, whatever you want to use and then create time blocks um, throughout every single day when you know you're working, you're studying, you're doing certain things, and then you know ahead of time, you don't have to kind of worry about in the minute, like, oh, what am I doing again? When am I doing it? You already have it mapped out ahead of time. That's really key. And at the end of the day for the evening routine, I like reading. It's a good way to kind of unwind, relax, get some good content in. You could also watch maybe YouTube videos, listen to a podcast, just some kind of good content. Planning out the next day as well. So again, in Google Calendar, however you want to do it, Map out what you're doing the next day so you don't have to think about it. And you can wake up in the morning, you can check your calendar and jump right into work. Relaxation and leisure too, you know, works or life's not all about just working and grinding. You do need some downtime. So in the evening after you've kind of done all your work and you've, you know, been productive, maybe if you want to play some games, you want to watch TV, whatever it is, this is a good time to do it just to kind of relax and, and go to sleep after. Also reflecting on wins and losses, you can do some journaling or thinking in the evening and think about, you know, where did I win today? Where did I do good? But also where did I maybe lose or you know, not do so good? And where can I improve based on that? So be honest with yourself. Maybe if you kind of slacked in a certain area, you didn't do something you're supposed to do. And then every day is a new day. Every day is fresh. Don't kind of beat yourself up about it or feel bad. The next day you can just work on that. And now with our goals mapped out, now what I want you to do is develop healthy habits. And this kind of goes back into your goals and your routine itself. So some things I'd recommend is reading and consuming good content. So if you're binging Netflix and social media and you're doom scrolling, try to cut those habits out and replace it with good books, YouTube videos, even articles and just general reading on the internet um, and podcasts. So this can be things about like self-improvement, entrepreneurship, career, whatever kind of matters to you, whatever you're trying to work on and improve in life, try to consume content around that. And a really good hack too, I learned from the book, The Millionaire Fast Lane, which you should definitely pick up and read. It's a great book. Um, he talks about the idea that there's kind of all these downtimes we have during the day that we could be consuming good content and it really adds up. So maybe when you're commuting to work or you're just driving in general, when you're exercising or working out, when you're cleaning and doing different things, you can plug in your AirPods, your earphones, and you can be listening to YouTube videos, audiobooks, podcasts. And when you think about all that downtime and commute time you have every day, if you're consuming good content when you do that, you can literally be consuming like hours of good content every day. Like I do this when I'm driving, I'm always listening to like books or videos. When I'm working out, same thing. It's just every day I'm consuming hours and hours of good content. So it's a really easy hack. Secondly, exercising. This is a, you know, a non-negotiable if you want to live a good life. Um, find a form of exercise you can stick to. Maybe it's weightlifting, running, sports, going for walks. Maybe it's rock climbing and different things like that. This is going to build up your confidence, your self-esteem, your discipline. And it's going to make you very healthy and feel great about yourself. And then related to that, it's going to be healthy eating and dieting. So definitely kind of audit how you eat. You eat a lot of like processed food, junk food, things like that, that just aren't going to make you look and feel good. Instead, try to create a healthy meal plan that incorporates a lot of like good protein, good complex carbs, fruits and veggies, things like that. Protein shakes, take supplements, you know, try to find a way to improve your health through your diet because what you eat definitely impacts a lot of how you feel and how you look. And then it's going to definitely translate into your energy and it's kind of how you approach the day in general. Journaling as well, like I mentioned, you can physically journal or do it online or on an app. 
any kind of journal your thoughts and your feelings and your goals. That gives you more self-awareness, more emotional regulation. And what's cool too is like once you do it for a while, it's almost like a time capsule. Like I have journals from like five, six, seven, eight years ago. It's kind of cool flipping through them and seeing like my progress and the journey. It's kind of a little cool kind of side effect to that, but definitely something um, that's very low impact you can do for a few minutes a day that has a lot of benefits. And then meditation. So I, I do recommend meditating every day in some kind of capacity. If you want to do visualization, breathing meditation, even outside of kind of like the spiritual aspect, there's a lot of science behind it that improves your emotional regulation, your concentration, your memory and different things. Don't underestimate the power of meditation in some capacity. Even just a few minutes a day is better than nothing. It's a really good habit to pick up. So after we have some good healthy habits, now we need to work on our relationships. So your net work is your net worth, as they say, right? It's not what you know, it's who you know. And it's actually been proven in studies as well that the quality of your closest relationships is actually the biggest um, factor in your overall happiness. And I think it couldn't be honestly any more true. If you have a good long-term relationship, good relationship with your family, you know, positive, ambitious friends around you, you're gonna live a really awesome life just based on that. It's gonna make you really positive and happy. So I'd recommend making networking and socializing into a lifestyle. So you can just put in effort to meet someone new every single day. If you met one new person every single day, that's 365 new contacts after one year, let alone if you meet more people at an event or you know you get introduced to someone else by a mutual friend. Just you know try to make it into a lifestyle because I think sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that networking is like going to a conference, going to an event, something like that. But really you can be socializing wherever you go. It can be at the gym, at work, at school, when you're taking classes, when you're out and about. I've made friends and, and met great contacts just kind of going through my daily life and you couldn't really predict it or expect it. It was just kind of meant to be and you know, I really think the energy you put out attracts a certain kind of person as well. But also I want you to audit your current friendships and social circles. So are these kind of friendships and people that are productive and positive and encourage your goals and growth? Or maybe they're more negative and kind of bring you down and hold you back. That's a real part of self-improvement. You do have to be honest with yourself if maybe some things have to you know, be let go, if they no longer serve you, and you can kind of work on you know, more positive, better friendships that are productive and healthy. Um, also, what I'd recommend doing for like networking in general is just researching events, conferences, groups in your area. There's websites like Eventbrite and Meetup. You can start attending things on a regular basis. I'm from kind of a smaller town, so they're not as active, but if you're in a larger city, you're gonna have literally events and things going on every single day. So definitely don't you know, underestimate the power of networking and definitely take advantage of that, especially if you're in like a very active area. It's gonna be a huge asset. You'll make friends, business connections. You can get jobs this way and kind of company or business opportunities. So this is a really big part of lifestyle design is auditing your relationships and building up those social circles. Okay, now we wanna focus on career. It's step number six. So having a fulfilling and lucrative career I think it's one of the best assets you can work on. I was a full-time entrepreneur for many, many years. And then several years back, I ended up coming to the corporate world, getting a full-time job in marketing. One of the best decisions I ever made, to be honest. It kind of gives me all the security and peace of mind that I need. I can work on my business on the side. And it was easily one of the best decisions I ever made. Um, I think a lot of people, especially in like the entrepreneur community, you always hear about like quitting your job, being your own boss, things like that. And I'm all for entrepreneurship. I think everybody should start a side hustle and a business, but Definitely don't underestimate how good a job can be in a career, especially like when you love it. You're in a good company, a good culture. Trust me, it's worth a million dollars. And that's why I want to talk about different things like taking online courses and certificates to develop skills and credentials for your resume. I'm in marketing, for example. So HubSpot, Facebook, Google, they all have free courses and certificates that you can get. Some of them are paid, but even just the free ones you can get onto your resume. And you could apply this to any industry though. Maybe you're in programming, the trades, whatever it might be. There's definitely ways to get more education on your resume that can help you get a better job. Also creating a personal brand. This is huge nowadays with social media and the internet. You need a personal brand to stand out. You can develop a landing page or a website really easily with Squarespace, Wix, Weebly. WordPress I love. Um, you can be active on LinkedIn and your social media profile. So make sure that you do have a social media profile active on all the major platforms. Make sure you have a nice headshot, all of your education, your bio, things like that filled out. And then publish content on a regular basis. So this can be blogging on LinkedIn or medium.com is free. You can use ChatGPT to help you if you're not the best writer. But even just in general, you can record videos on YouTube, social media, get content out there because then it increases your reach and your awareness. It makes you look like an authority and you're credible and then jobs and opportunities can come to you naturally. I've had that happen all the times where, you know, a recruiter reached out to me organically or maybe a client did. It was all because I have a website, and a lot of content out there and I have that brand established. Also, just make it a habit to check and apply on job boards. Um, you know, if you're interested in a certain kind of position or industry, you know, use LinkedIn, well-found, Indeed, whatever it might be. 
get some job boards listed, go on there, fill out your profile, and just make it a habit to apply to jobs every single day because it is a bit of a numbers game. Also though, you can reach out to recruiters directly via DM or email. So if you see a job posting, let's say on LinkedIn, you can find that company, find the recruiter in there, and then contact them directly and see if you can set up an interview or an informational interview to learn more about the role. That's a really good way to kind of circumvent all the other applicants and processes and go straight to the person that's the decision maker. And now after career, what I want to talk about is side hustle. So again, I'm all for entrepreneurship and having extra income streams. And I think it's the key really to financial freedom and confidence. You might have a really good job. It's awesome having extra passive income and income coming in on the side that you can use to save, invest, you know, pay for hobbies, whatever you're doing. And it's a couple things you can do I recommend is just starting an online business because it's really lucrative, low expenses, really easy to get started versus like a physical business that could have a lot more uh, resources that are required and money versus an online business where you get started right away. So e-commerce is still a good option. You might've heard of drop shipping uh, where you sell physical goods from another company and they ship it out and handle all the hard work. Um, some people say e-commerce, drop shipping is dead. It absolutely isn't. There's no such thing really as a dead business model. So don't believe any of that. You just have to get really good at finding a good niche and then getting good at marketing. So Facebook ads, TikTok ads, Google ads, search engine optimization, social media marketing, email marketing. If you're serious about e-commerce, you have to get really good at these different marketing strategies to drive sales and get more customers. But if I were to say one business model to start online, it will be freelancing. You can get on platforms like Upwork, Fiverr. You can start doing services and bidding on projects right away. You can actually develop your own website or landing page, put together a portfolio, depending on whatever you're offering, and then cold email and cold DM businesses and prospects and you could freelance that way. But I think it's probably one of the easier ways to get started because it doesn't really require any capital. Um, you can get started right away pitching people, doing consulting about something you know about, something you love. And then also affiliate marketing. This is a big way I make money online. Um, essentially is where you partner up with, let's say Amazon Associates, you join that program, you can link out to any Amazon product. And when someone buys that through your special link, you get a commission, you get a percentage. You don't have to create the product. You're not shipping it, anything like that. You get passive income just by promoting another brand's products. And Amazon Associates is really good and free, but you can look up affiliate programs in any kind of niche or industry and then do it that way. And I did want to talk about the Transformation Academy. If you're interested in lifestyle design and just unlocking massive success and achieving your dream lifestyle, you can check that out in the description where you get almost a dozen courses on all these topics from career, business, mindset, health and fitness, everything in between, access to the private Discord community, coaching and mentorship and feedback from me and, and so much more. So if you're interested in any of those things, check that out. Also, if you're interested in learning more about self-improvement in these topics, feel free to subscribe. Let me know down in the comments if there's anything else you'd like me to talk about and make a video on. I wish you the best in your self-improvement journey. You know, I love you all and I'll catch you very soon.